And speaking of Dane, there's Dane. He's going to do some, right. napkin, some napkin rings for us tonight. And folks, here's the deal. I am now going to mute all members. I'm going to do a mute all. And uh, that is because we don't want any background sounds. It's not that we don't want questions or comments, whatever. But we'd like you to hold your questions and comments, if you could, to the end of the demonstration. So that Dane doesn't, you don't want to break a stride, okay? It's not that we'll forget, you don't want to break a stride. So now with that, I just muted everybody, and Dane's going to unmute himself. There he is. And now here, Dane Chandler. Hey, can't see my face, but with my hands. So, the last two weeks, Brenda's been doing bangles, and so the discussion came up about how to hold, hold bangles on turning or finishing the inside of them. And so I thought a simple project to demonstrate that would be using a napkin ring technique. And this technique actually comes from our wonderful host, uh, Eddie Castellan. He's got a excellent demo on doing napkin rings. And so I borrow extensively from what he's already figured out. You know, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel when it's already been created. Thank you. So, so as, as an example, here's some larger ones that I've made. Got a little bit of texturing on them. I don't know if they're coming through in the video. It's the white woods. So. Not very light. Simple bead, just frame the texturing. And done another set last night. Practice run. Just doing some simple die on the center band, simple bead on the outside. What we're going to use tonight is a piece of Arizona ash. Very forgiving wood. It's hard, but it's straight grain and, and cuts really good. We're going to rough this down. We're going to take it down to about uh, two inches in, in diameter. We're going to frame out the number of uh, napkin rings we can get from it. So we can probably get, you know, at least five of them out of it. We're probably only going to do about three on them. And I'm going to show the improvised jam chuck that I use for holding napkin rings and then I have a lot had a larger one for bangles but unfortunately I can't find it I don't know if I've got it in another another jam chuck bucket I haven't perused to figure out where what I did with it or what but anyhow so um, I'll go ahead and show it so it's straight up jam chuck and sometimes when when you when you bore through the center of your ring for it to hold and press onto your tenon. Sometimes they're at a, um, it'll be, it'll require, you know, so a little, little additional diameter. So I split it four ways. Cross cut that way and cross cut that way. And then prior to doing that, drilled the hole, tapped it, and I put in a larger wood screw. And you just tighten that in to fan the quarters to hold your piece and so we'll see how that works should we need to use that function later on here so first we're gonna we're gonna round this down is everybody hearing me okay sounds good to me sir sounds yeah good. we got you all right gotcha so i'm using a using a step center being held inside my chuck Got an approximately two and three quarter inch square on this side and two and a half on this side. So like I said, we're just gonna round this down and get ourselves a nice little cylinder. We should get a little bit of good character out of here because there's a lot of piece that had a lot of limbs coming off of it. So, so we'll see how it goes. So first we're gonna use a roughing gouge. I'm gonna use a one inch roughing gouge. We'll turn this thing around. So 
speed that I'm turning at is the speed I'm comfortable with. Just remember, as long as you keep your hands on this side of your tool rest, you're not going to hurt your hand. Always make sure you got everything tightened down correctly. I almost get in there. So you see, I'm doing doing a slicey cut, and I'm also taking off a huge amount of material at the same time. As long as you're coming through at an angle, somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees, you're gonna make nice shavings. You don't wanna be going straight in that's for a different technique for a different type of uh, turning. That's found in stair styles. We're just going to rough this down and We'll throw a skew on there to get a nice clean surface that can only be damaged by sandpaper. <laughs> That's a good way to check to see if you're fully round. I think I am. Yep. So I'm just going to cut a tenon on this side so I can mount it inside my chuck. I'm going to go ahead and put the, put the roughing gouge up. It's already served its purpose. So now I'm just going to cut a tenon. First, I'm going to clean the face up. Chuck, so I need to put a little bit of a uh, dovetail in there. You don't need a huge tenon. You really don't need a huge tenon on anything. To turn. As with all of my demos or anytime I'm turning, whether it's a demo or not, I always knock my wood chips away before I move my tool rest or I move my tail stock because I don't want I don't want wood chips getting caught underneath it. God I've got chuck. I mean not trying to knock it out. You gotta screw it with the chuck. That's a no that's a no no. Right, so I got about a quarter inch uh, tenon on there. Got two holes here, Chuck. Use them. Manufacturer put them there for a reason. All right. I'm just going to advance my 
Life Center here. Always, always restart the lathe as I'm advancing the Life Center into it to make sure it's drilling per se correctly. Let's set our tool rest up. Skewing action, a little bit of skewing action. And so when you're using a skew, you always want to think about this being a clock face here on your chuck. Up on top, that's 12 o'clock. You want to be cutting somewhere around 10.30 to 11.30. If you start straightening up your your bevel and going in straight or anything beyond 45 degrees, you're going to be getting massive catches. Once again, it doesn't matter about speed. You want to see that you're holding your bevel or you've captured your bevel onto the wood piece and you're holding it the right way. All you got to do is turn a little bit. And you'll see wood shavings coming off. Is that coming through on the video? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Looks awesome. good. All right. So, speed her up here. Once again, turning at a speed that is comfortable for me myself. All I want to do is a nice clean surface on here. Dane, we have a whole lot of shield. Um, can you move what? your camera back? Can you move your camera back about six inches? Which way? That way? That or way. This way. No, that way. Nope. Away from that you. way. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just because we're seeing some of your top of your head. Got it. Um. That's good right there, I think. Okay. That should be, yep. Good. Thanks, Dane. Oh, you're welcome. Yep, perfect. You'll notice when you're using a skew, you want to use the bottom third. You're cutting with the heel, bottom third. You're skewing on this side with the toe. Again, it's the bottom third. I can really feel the knots in this wood as I'm cutting it. All right, let's see where we're at. Yep. 
Well, that looks real good. That's a finish ready for 340. <sighs> Let's see how close we are. Two and a half inches. Believe that'll work. And so next, I want to lay out. Uh, next, I want to clean, make this, make this side nice and straight. And so that's done. So so in staying with the napkin ring image, these are approximately one inches in, in diameter. So we're gonna take our calipers and we're gonna lay out one inch dimensions. However, we're gonna be using parting tool to go in and score part way down through the wood stuff through the spindle here uh, which in turn is going to allow for us coming in with a mortise uh, with a forstner bit that's going to cut everything perfectly with the, with the perfect in, um, inside diameter and it's gonna pair everything off perfectly and you don't have to worry about using your parting tool the full way. One thing with a parting tool that gets missed on, on a regular regular straight parting tool as, as this, not the diamond, <coughs> is they come, they seem like they're milled flat, but they're actually, they're not. And that's what causes a lot of a lot of the wood burn, um, a lot of the binding when you're going in. So on, in this particular instance, we don't want to make a relief cut when we're going in and making this cut. So similar to sharpening and, and prepping your uh, scrapers, I believe Scott Hampton uh, covered this on one of his sharpening demos. You want to flatten sides of your parting tool. That'll prevent a lot of the catches and a lot of the a lot of the wood burn that you will get that, that that's going to be covered over or carried back onto the actual uh, parting tool here. It's, it's no different than taking a bench chisel and flattening it in order to get a proper cut on flat wood or a plane iron. You flatten the back in order to get a proper surface in order to get a proper sharpened bevel. Does that make sense? Works for me. All right. So with that, my parting tool is one and one eighth of an inch. And I want to have approximately one inch. These are these are one inch wide, Dane? Yes. Okay. So I want to have one inch wide rings so you're going to set your calipers at you know the add on the thickness of your parting tool and for mine it's one eighth of an inch and all you're going to do is line up the outside caliper point you're going to gradually rotate the front caliper point just to score that wood I've got one other question, Dane. Um, you said something about relief cuts. Do you make a relief cut first? Or how does that uh, gonna that's, work? That's, um, well, depending upon the, the, the type of um, embellishment you're going to do. Okay. If you're gonna use a texturing tool, you'll, you'll do your texturing first and then make your relief cut. There's 
No mark. And since this is a, a light colored wood, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use a texturing tool on it. But if you're aim to use a texturing tool on it. You would go ahead and do your texturing now prior to making your parting cut inside. The reason, reason for that is it's far easier to do it on a specific surface as opposed to hopping over the gaps as created by the parting tool. And so when you're cutting, so you laid it out one and one eighth of an inch. So you want to make sure that you're cutting on the left hand side of your mark that you just laid out. Knots are doing me doing me no favors. But they're gonna look so good. Yeah, hopefully. Been on uh, almost that. on that so let me clean that up. So next, what I want to do is I want to cut in, I want to cut in some beads. I'm just going to eyeball it. Three sixteenths of an inch. This works really well if you've done any type of texturing. We'll see how that goes. I'm 
going to use my half inch skew for that. First, I'm going to make my V cut. So for so for doing beads, what I have found that normally works for myself is I will look at the bead portion that you've laid out and think of it in halves. And so I would work first half of it, second half of it, and come back and do the same thing. On the, on the opposite side of the bead that you're trying to cut in. And the motion is, again, finding your bevel, you're rotating up, and you're lifting, not necessarily with the tool handle, you can do the tool handle lift, but if you just use your body, lift with your knees, straightening up your body as you're coming forward you're, with the turn, you should be able to get a pretty decent beam. And so, no different than if you're doing it with the heel, you can do the same thing with the toe. I prefer to do, use the toe because I can see, as they say, around the curve better and i for me cutting with the toe just works better for me light cuts rotate lift Because of muscle memory, typically you want to go do all the ones that have your left hand side first. And then come back and do your right side. Cut, rotate, lift. Cut, rotate, and lift. So I've been back from my trip, depositing my wife up to take care of her grandmother. I don't have my muse with me anymore. I'll be honest, I've struggled turning here as of late. I blame it on her. Works for me. I do that all the time. Well, true, but you only do that quietly. <laughs> Y'all just need to turn. Yeah, we talk about it. It's it's weird. It's it's a weird feeling um, that I've been going through. I think it's sweet that you're missing her. Yeah, well, 27 years, you know. If 
grinding it, rotate, and you do a catch. Okay, plenty of meat for that one to be pitched. Dan, I don't want to be a buzzkill, but what about a beating tool? Just a question. What? What about doing that with a beating tool? Oh, that'd be far easier. I like what you're doing. I just want to give other options. Oh yeah, a beating tool would work great. You're talking about a beating parting tool or you're talking about the tool that you just shove in? You just shove it in. It's one made by D-Way or half a dozen other folks. I've got the D-Ways in about four or five different sizes. Just taking down the inside. And I picked that up at SWAT watching a guy do a demonstration. Just so I gotta have that. Yeah, I have the D Way beating tools also, and I love my I don't have the full set. I just have three of them, but they're they're really useful. There's the catch. Don't do that, okay? I know, right? All right. It happens. All right, so now we're going to set it up for... Set it up for the portion of it. Maybe. Go ahead and remove the live center. Obviously. If you members can see that decal on his tailstock, that's worldwidewoodturners.org's club logo. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had picked up some of the trade and I was pointing them off to members for the cost of freight. Um, I had somebody approach me the other day that may be able to do that for us and put it on a website where you can just go and order it through PayPal or whatever and you'll be paying for the the um, the, the sticker plus the freight and that's all that will be on it. No add-ups, no markups, anything. We're working on it. There was a couple of hundred go out the first time. I would, I'm going to try to make a deal with them. What size bed is that? Um, I don't know about that size. Okay. Two inches. That's side to side. How about top to bottom? Same size? One and one and three quarter by the width is a half inch. So I won't be using my chuck, so we'll be making the creating a jam chuck out of this piece here. All right, so got it chucked up. The Jacob's chuck for the force near bit. And your, Jake, your Jacob's chuck's got three holes on it. At a minimum, tighten your bit up with two of them. Worst thing imaginable, especially if you're doing a, doing a, a, a base, when you get down in there, your Forstner bit breaks loose from the chuck and gets stuck inside the wood because of the friction and the heat and the expansion. And it's not a, it is not a good deal. I've read about that someplace. Yeah, I've, I've seen videos on it pretty funny <laughs> sometimes. But 
this is what's going to happen. You're going to wind up losing your piece. So another, you know, same thing, you know, when we're talking about flattening and, you know, where flat work merges into um, round work. Same with uh, Forstner bits. They need to be, as they come to you from the, from the hardware store, right from the manufacturer, they come to you dull. They are not sharp. So you need to flatten and sharpen this inside face. Once you get that taken care of, then you've got a proper edge you left on your Forstner bit. And you'll know you've got a sharp Forstner bit when you start getting pencil sharpener like shavings when you're drilling. boxed over. I drill approximately 300 RPMs. Gradually. So you can see the savings coming off. That's how you know you got a short portion of it. If it's still not tight enough. See, it's whisk. Cut a little bit, back it out. Cut a little bit, back it out. So what this is going to do, you're going to drill through, and where you, where you parted through, it's, the ring is just going to slide back. do is you want to twist counterclockwise to get these off. And you can come on to the next one. I didn't part through enough.
Of course, it's probably going to go flying. Now, if I just had one of them grabber sticks. I'm just going to go ahead and park that one off as well. And then we'll make our chuck, the jam chuck for it. Just going to use the portion of bit here to identify the outside diameter that we need to try and turn to. This portion of bit out, Jacob's chuck out. Any questions while we're changing tooling? You're going to, uh, you showed us a collet chuck earlier, and this time you're going to use a jam chuck, correct? Well, the other was a, this is a jam chuck as well, except I just quartered it, and I used a screw to expand it for when it's, and there's a different, you know, as opposed to using napkins or, or paper whenever, to, when, when you shape the inside and flip it around. But in this instance here, since I didn't make them this diameter, this is actually set up for, for napkin rings for a one and a half inch inside diameter napkin rings. And this is one and three quarters. So to show how to make the, make the jam truck, we'll just work through it. That is very similar to what Brenda showed us early in a meeting tonight. She made one for bracelets. Yes. yes, and I have that one with me now. So when Dean's done. Good. Thank you, Brenda. Forstner bit gave us a approximate diameter to turn to. Got plenty of wood here. Let's sneak up on it. It'd be swell if we could just, we could just Throw that tool on there and turn exactly to that diameter. Rare if that ever works. Oh, so close. Looks like we're using napkin. Put 
for that paper. Cheaper than that. Just like jam, you know, typical jam chuck. ring adhered to the jam chuck. Now all you got to do, what you could do if you have a boring head, which I also have, normally what I would use is boring head, go in and clean up your inside faces. But for purposes of this, have yourself a quarter inch bowl gouge or quarter inch spindle gouge. You just want to gradually scrape inside, almost close for the flute. You know, catch that bottom wing, just to scrape on the outside. They'll bring it around to clean up the outside surface from where the first one bit cut. Side's done. Pop it off, put it around. Make sure you're still rolling congruent. Repeat. Again, nice and light touches. Cool. Cleaned up inside. Beautiful. This one feels like a bunch of t shirts.
same thing. Side. Nice light touch. This reed is almost closed up. And they're about 9.30, just doing a clock face. I'll also, for me, I'll also tip my tool down similar to in the fashion that you do with um, paper. Now a little toilet paper can tighten things up. Last one. Actually, one more. Well, I got this piece on. Show it earlier. Before I started cutting them off. Wanted to add dye to them. You do it while it's all one piece. After you've got everything framed out that you want to have framed out for detail wise. So, say you just wanted to dye the inside band. Come in with your dye. like so. Wait, isn't that almost cheating? Almost. Just almost. You didn't put a diaper down. Yeah, you I didn't spill any. But I didn't spill any. You got some on your tool rest. Oh, tool rest is okay. <laughs> well, we can't see his that's forehead, that's what it's sprayed to. <laughs> right? Yeah, that face mask, right? <laughs> Got it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, members, explain to your spouse why you're bringing toilet paper to the workshop. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know, right? I was told, take the, don't take the good stuff, go to home, uh, Dollar General and get my own stuff. I need to use a lathe diaper to protect my bedways, but I'm, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm always in too big a hurry. One of these times you're going to remember, Billy. Actually, Dan, you do. Maybe. Dan, you do have some on your bed. I'll send you one of the Oh, there it goes. 
Okay. Uh, I was just that was just sawdust. Okay, it wiped off. He got it off with his skin because his skin will grow back, right, Dave? <laughs> Not as important as the uh, lathe either. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It's the biggest organ in our body. Is that right? For us heavy duty guys, that's a lot of organ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, until it grows back, there's always CA glue. Right. But if you go to Dollar General, I found out they got rolls that have a thousand sheets on a roll, and it's no bigger than the one you get with 300 sheets at the grocery store. Buy a two ply and then separate it. You got two thousand. Yeah, like who actually counts? Who actually counts those sheets? No, right. They may be uh, cheating you out of four or five sheets, Captain. Probably they probably are. are. <laughs> Doesn't Cheryl Crow this count sheets? That is way counted. It's way counted in uh, inventory and manufacturing. Well, we went to the cellos on that one, didn't we? Right. <laughs> well, since it's going halfway, Eddie. I know. No. Yeah. Brenda didn't stay quiet. But then, you know, we give a chance. Got to give him a hard time when you can. No kidding. <laughs> All right. If it isn't Drum. fun, what is it? What's a little harassment among friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dean, you see that stuff on the floor? What is it? <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's called shavings. You should get some for your shop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, believe Dean. me, I'll restock. Okay. <laughs> uh, mine stays stocked. So mine mine. Oh. I don't so shovel you, it out till it's at least so you, can put the, so you can put the finish on as a, as a long cylinder and all it would be left to do is to finish the inside after you uh, the forstner bit coming through the cylinder to, to cut them off or you can finish them individually and if you're using super glue CA all you got to do Instead of using napkin or paper towel, use wax paper as your shim, and super glue does not stick to wax paper. So you can finish everything on the lathe with your CA. Ooh. You can't buy wax paper. The guy at the grocery store told me he quit making it. <laughs> there we go. Nice, Very nice, Dan. Dan. Simple. Now I gotta make me a nice jam. Great demo, Dane. <laughs> nice. Okay, Dane, Sorry, Dane, I, I wasn't able to use my regular, regular um, jam chuck with the screw with the quarters, but that alleviates having to use paper. For I don't know about you, Brenda, but I got a box full of those things. All of the jam chucks. Yep. No, oh, I, I do. I've, got a, I've got a shelf, and I've got I've got three five-gallon buckets. Also called waste blocks. Also called, you know. Yeah. Be careful! Right. Don't call them scrap wood. Nope, I didn't do that. All right. <laughs> and, and then so. Oh, birdhouse material. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and always, always make sure you designate. Typically, you want to do this at the beginning. You want to designate your jaw number one or jaw number four, whichever whichever jaw you can remember, stick it back in. And as long as you put this back in the jaw number one, it is always going to run through. It's not going to be out around by a fraction of a millimeter, a fraction of an inch. You ain't going to have to resurface it. So 
There you have it. That's the easy way to do brain turning. Thank you, without dude. Using, without using a boring head. <laughs> boring heads are really cool. But that goes into your that goes into your life center. That's your adjustment. Put your cutter in. So the life center, you know, determines the feed rate, you know, going inside to, to clean something up. And there's, we have an adjustment on the side that will shift this cutter over a fraction of an inch at a time. <laughs> so this is- I already a, have one. It's a, I've it's never a seen one. Toy, it's a fun toy for bangles anything like that rings put that in the chat will you a day what put that in the chat where you where you bought that or what it is yeah okay i'll send you the link uh, of the one that i got one and additional thing on one let me add some one additional thing that that uh uh cutter will do it will cut a straight cut straight in and you can you can Dial it into a thousandth of an inch so you can put, you actually can put a sleeve over a box. Yes. It allows, it allows you to step sleeves over boxes and turn them down to a sixteenth of an inch. And so when you cut through, you can see all this, all the different layers and stuff. So. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a handy, handy G whiz thing. Hmm. I suppose it's real expensive. Is it real expensive? Uh, Is it real expensive? Uh, Is it real expensive? Between 100 and 200, I don't even remember. It looked expensive. I'll, 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 find, I'll find my link. Hmm. Well, okay. thanks, Dane. In the chat, so. Great, great job, Dane. Dane. Nice demo, thanks, Dane. Dane. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Great, great deal, Gene. Thank Help you, me Steve. a lot. Thank you, Dane. Right on. Gonna have to make me a Glad jam chuck now. <laughs> good. And then, like I said, Eddie's got Eddie's got a real good video on it. I remember watching it. Why? Wow. I think he's still got his videos up. Um, but I remember watching it. I don't know, probably six, seven years ago. Um, I'm doing napkin rings that style. So, Eddie, you still got your stuff up? Yes, sir. It's still there. It's still 